Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. In our Mass today, we pray in a special way for the infant Jesus of Prague. We also pray for a special intention. And you can add your own private intention in this Mass and, and let's pray for those who ask us to keep them in our private prayers. We are sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us a life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things that we may feel the working of your mercy, and that we may serve you with all our hearts. We as this trial, Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated and listen to your readings. A reading from the book of Sirach Wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them, hug them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the most highest covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. 
The response is, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to, to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, the debtor was brought before him, who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in repayment of the debt. 
At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion the master of that servant. Let him go and forgive him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servants begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had a fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Last week, uh, last week we talked about you know, how evil, how evil is fed by the silence of the good people. How evil grew for the fact that good people never spoke up. And today we have this passage, or rather these passages from the Bible, the first reading from the book of Sirach, second reading from the book of Romans and the Gospel. And they're all telling us about forgiveness and what makes forgiveness almost impossible. And reminds us that forgiveness is possible with love. Love is the only thing that can make it easier for us to forgive. You know, I always like to start my homily with something a little funny. I don't know if I've told this joke before. But if you have heard it from me, as I always say, laugh again is still a treat. I heard about this lady. It's a lady who came to service one Sunday morning and, and she met this friendly usher who said to her, ma'am, where would you like to sit? And the elderly lady said, I would like to sit in the very front pew. And the usher said, no, ma'am, you don't want to do that. Our pastor is very boring. And the, the lady asked the usher, do you know who I am? And the usher said, nope. And uh, so 
the lady said, I am the pastor's mother. And the usher asked him, do you know who I am? And she said, no. And she, he said, thank you, God. <laughs> so my dear people of God, one thing that we all know is that we all like to be forgiven. But it's always difficult, you know, for us to forgive. I remember that was many years ago. I think it was uh, in May 1981. And this happened in Rome at St. Peter's Basilica, Rome. People gathered, many people, thousands of people gathered at St. Peter's Square to pray with the Holy Father, St. John Paul II, right now, Pope John Paul II then. And uh, there was this man, a Muslim, who had a different agenda, Muhammad Ali Akka. He had a different agenda. For him, he had a gift for the Pope. Akar aimed and shot the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, at a very close range. But as God would have it, miraculously, our Holy Father was saved. The Blessed Mother intervened and saved the life of the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II then. But you can imagine what the Holy Father did a, a year or a few months later. Pope John Paul II went to the prison where this man was incarcerated. He went into the prison and had this man forgiven. The man who shot him, the man who really wanted to kill him, forgave him. You know what happened? That forgiveness, as a matter of fact, it opened the door. It opened the door of this man's heart to seek the face of God. The forgiveness of our Holy Father. And uh, I think it was in 2000, during the year of Jubilee. Do you remember? Year of Jubilee? In 2000, thousands of people gathered at a, at a square, St. Peter's Square. And the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, again, publicly ask for forgiveness in whatever, whatever any member, the members of the church, however they have wronged the society, whichever way they hurt, they wronged the society, he asked for forgiveness for you and for me. So my dear people of God, there is something in this forgiveness, whenever we talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness must always be a two-way experience. Two-way experience. It's not just one way. It's not one-way traffic, no. It's a two-way experience. Remember what the Bible said? What Jesus said in the Bible? Unless you forgive, you will not be forgiven. Unless you forgive, you will not be forgiven. Look at the cross. Look at the symbol of the cross. 
The symbol of the cross has something to teach us. And that's what the Bible is telling us today in the readings. That the debt, the debt we owe God is more than whatever we owe others in terms of forgiveness. What does that mean? That means that we offend God every day. We offend God, we sin, but God forgives us every day. But sometimes we have the details, we have details, what the Bible said. We always keep the details of the wrongdoing people have done to us. We keep the details, we have the list, we have a chart where we put them down how people offend us, what they do to us on a daily basis. As husband and wife, you have a chart, you have a list, a diary where you put down what your spouse does to you on a daily basis every day. Remember what the Bible said, if the Lord counts our guilt, who will stand? If he counts our guilt, that's Psalm 130. If the Lord counts our guilt, nobody will stand. Look at this wicked guy, the wicked servant in the gospel, and his fellow servants. You remember, you see the vengeful acts, the vengeful acts in our hearts, planning revenge, vengeful, the, the vengeful acts in our hearts, Planning to kill. So my dear people of God, there are two obstacles. Two obstacles to forgiveness. Anger and hatred. There are two obstacles to forgiveness. Anger and hatred. And the Bible said that wrath, Sirach, wrath and anger are hateful stuff. They are hateful stuff. Anger and wrath are hateful stuff. So we should not, if we have those things inside us, they will always stand in our way of forgiving. And so love is the only thing that we need. Love, as long as you have love, Look, you can always forgive. But if you don't have love, it's almost impossible to forgive. Because it's not easy to forgive. It is difficult to forgive. But love makes it possible. Remember, was it uh, Nelson? Nelson Mandela. He was in prison for many, many years. And uh, so he wanted to forgive all those who incarcerated him. And one day, so when he was released from prison, he saw one of the guys that hurt him. He forgave him. He told him, I'm forgiving you. And invited him over for a lunch. And this man came while they were eating lunch. This man was not eating good lunch. Why? Because he was shaking. Because Nelson has forgiven him, but he still had him, he was still in prison. This man was still in prison. And that was what, why Nelson Mandela said, well, I tried to, for, I, I forgave him so that I will be out of prison but he is still in prison. So it's always good for us to forgive. If you're able to forgive, you are out of prison. And the person that you have forgiven, the person that has hurt you, is still in prison. And that is why we are told that 
love, forgiveness takes love. Forgiveness takes love. But the only thing that is always difficult is to forget. And to forget takes humility. I think it's Mother Teresa of Calcutta who said that. So my dear love God, let us see how we can build good relationship. Always be considerate. If you are living, it's not easy for two people to live together. Very difficult for more than two, two or more than two people to live together. But the only thing that can make it possible is for us to have that act of love. And know that we are not perfect. We step on people's nerves. You don't want your friendship to break. You don't want anything to break your friendship. Not very little thing breaks friendship. Stop keeping list of whatever. No, did not, don't put, don't leave, uh, put things in the diary. Or continue to count. You stop counting because it doesn't help anything. There are some relationships that sh can be some relationship that can be saved if we are able to come together and uh, talk about it, talk about it, and be ready to say, I'm sorry. Be ready to say, I forgive you. Just like Nelson Mandela, or like Christ Jesus himself, God himself, who forgives us on a daily basis, every moment of our life, so that we can save our friendship, we can save our relationship, we can save our marriage, we can save our relationship in the family. Let's ask for God's grace, God's grace and strength in order to live like Christians. Christians live with love and I don't call myself a Christian if I harbor grudges, and if I have anger, if I have hatred inside me. Let me put those things aside and put on love. Let us stand for the creed. I believe in one God. salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary became man for our sake was crucified on the Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end and believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful. Mindful of our many needs, we come before God and humbly ask that his peace and reconciliation will fill our world. That all church leaders will inspire in us a willingness to forgive those who have sinned against us, we pray to the Lord. That the leaders of nations will courageously seek reconciliation and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For our parish, that we continue to actively invite men and women in our midst to share their gifts of energy with the church as they each discern their vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That the gospel's call to forgiveness may bring our society to reject the use of capital punishment. We pray to the Lord. 
For the souls in purgatory, may our efforts and prayers bring them consolation. We pray to the Lord. You may now add your own personal intentions. God, listen to our prayers, the prayers of your faithful. Remember in a special way, Lord, the special intention to the infant Jesus of Prague and instill in us the ways of forgiveness that we may reach out in love to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bless the you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness and this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made it to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness and this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Lord, look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. 
by sending down your spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Archbishop, George, the Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us sing. Amen. My dear people of God, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy sin can come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
at the mingling of this body and blood of Christ, bring eternal life to all who receive it. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your sin. For the mingling of this body and blood of God, bring eternal life to all who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worried I should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. Today, tonight at 7 p.m., we invite you to a solemn extraordinary form chanted Vespers in honor of the Vigil of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Monday, September the 14th, is a Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. At 6 p.m., please join us in praying the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. And then at 7 p.m., we will have a solemn extraordinary form mass followed by the blessing of crosses and crucifixes. 40 Days for Life is a 40-day vigil of prayer and fasting for an end to abortion. Stop by the table outside the church today to sign up to join a prayer vigil on Friday, October the 23rd, which is Annunciation's Day to commit to cover the entire day to pray outside a Planned Parenthood abortion facility on Gulf Freeway. Project Mercy is Tuesday, September the 15th, Project Mercy is a monthly Respect Life devotion that makes prayerful preparation for the abortion holocaust. We begin with Holy Hour and Reconciliation at 7 p.m., followed by a pro-life mass at 8 p.m. For more information on these and other events, please visit the parish website, where you can also subscribe to receive the bulletin and newsletter electronically. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for coming. You have a great week. Hail, Holy Queen, and throne above, O Maria. Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, O ye cherubim, sing with Heaven and earth resound our